just a, a scouting report on Virginia, what you've seen so far from the Cavs and how different they are from maybe when we were there a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think they're, um, you know, they're installing a, a different, different offense, a different defense, a different um, set of special team schemes that, that, you know, have been successful for a very long time, several different places. When you look at, at, you know, kind of the Rocky long Bronco Mendenhall branching of, of a lot of coaching trees. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of defense looking at it from an offensive standpoint, a uh, ton of, ton of pressures, uh, a bunch of different looks, um, and so it gives you – there's a big menu that they have and, and for us to prepare for, uh, which led to some headaches today at practice um, from a coverage standpoint. All, you know, all the things that they do are, are really good um, and they're unique. Um, and then offensively, new scheme, new quarterback. Uh, the quarter, I think the same quarterback that we played against is a backup. I think he's listed as third, if I'm not mistaken. I can't really remember. Um uh, but big physical offensive linemen, three really good tailbacks. You know, one guy they had kind of, I think for them, kind of the, the equivalent of uh, of Charles fumbling their guy, you know, fumbled twice, which is very uncharacteristic. They also had a, had a turnover in special teams, like that, just as we did, and, and kind of stubbed their toe at the beginning. Uh, but big, physical, um, yet still very athletic um, in special teams plays excellent, uh, had, had a couple chances to get their hands on balls. Um, and, and, you know, and then a bunch of unknowns just as far as how, how, uh, the matchup goes. And, you know, again, that's kind of why we, we approach things the way we do. We talk about literally X's and O's and how we're going to line up and how we're going to try to block them and then just worry about ourselves. Obviously Davis, obviously Davis, a lot different schematically compared to Virginia with their air raid. How does this challenge compare for Arion Springs, Ugo Amadi, and all the corners going against an offense like Virginia? Yeah, there and some big receivers. They've got some big physical guys, some tall guys, some thick guys um, that can that can run. And and so yeah, I think that that you know I would imagine if I'm sitting in their offices, we're talking about running the football and taking shots, and you know we have to be prepared for that. Uh, and then by the same token, there's the whole uh, air raid. You know, to use your your words, the the sector of what they've done in the past, and then all the the two back stuff they've done with with both kind of a tight end hybrid fullback guy in the backfield um, that that they've done really well for many years. So it's a a several headed monster. Mike back. Given that Royce has been hyped up as the bell cow, the guy that everybody sort of gets behind in the rushing game, um, and I know you you preach you you take what the defense gives you. Um, do you adjust or do anything different for Royce to be that guy um, in the rushing game for him to to crack through 100, get to 200 yards a game? Do we? Do you after looking at the UC Davis game tape? Is there anything you plan on doing differently uh, with Royce or with the running backs in general? No, I mean I think. I heard after the game, which I didn't realize, you know, he was short of 100 yards for the first time in a long time, and that that's unfortunate. But I, I know that he's not losing sleep about that. Um, and I, th I think, you know, when you have 11, I think he had 11 carries, 10 carries. Um, that that's that thing again. You're you're never going to be right answering that question. So if you if you give him a 12th carry in the fourth quarter against UC Davis and he gets hurt, you're the biggest idiot in the history of the world. If you don't give him 20 carries to get to, you know, so we're, we're somewhere in the middle on that, but uh, got the win. He stayed healthy and uh, we'll move forward. And TBJ was, uh, he had a pretty nice day too. Do you still ever? No, you... no, I'm trying to, th oh, Tony Brooks James. Yeah, James. Tony Brooks James. Um, See, nobody calls him TBJ. I like that. <laughs> um, but he had, a, he had a pretty good game. He, he broke away for a couple really good runs. That spin, that double spin yeah. that he had. Um, do you plan on utilizing him a little more given that uh, his style is different from Kanai and from Royce? Yeah, Tony, those guys all do have different styles. All, all three of the kind of the, the, the backup tail. We really have, you know, three backup tailbacks in our, in our mind because they're all different. They all have their strengths. They all have things that they're working on. Uh, both Kanai, uh, can I, Tony, I mean, Tony had an exceptional fall camp for him. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, again, hopefully he doesn't have to play 20, 30 carries a game. Uh, that's not exactly what would be best for him or, or us. Uh, but yes, he's, he's a guy that we, we count on. I've heard coaches say in the past that sometimes the biggest improvement from in a season is from week one to week two. How, how true is that? And I guess, why is that even 
talked about that that's often the big improvement. Yeah, I think I think it is true. I think there's a lot of anxiety in that first game, certainly for the first time starters, and even for a guy again like Charles, you know, who, who made a couple of very uncharacteristic errors, or uh, you know, we had some veteran guys. Uh, like I said on Saturday night, lose contain. We had a veteran guy, you know, with a couple holding penalties. So, so I think those, you know, those are very easy, just correctable things. And and the the you know just the when they watch it on film, just oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that type of things. Those are corrected. And so hopefully, yeah, you're you're, you're hopefully you're you're improving, you know, every single week and playing at a higher level level every single week. Um, but it does it does certainly seem to 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 be historically accurate with a younger team now in week two have you seen some of the guys that made their debuts i guess not have those nerves have you kind of seen that observe that in practice heading into now the second game of the season yeah this this is when you find out kind of how they how they learn um just of of week in and week out you could you could be running you know even if you're running something similar schematically but a uh, different front, you know, for instance, defensively or a different disguise in the back end. Um, just how guys, how guys kind of process that is, is big this time of year. Cause now you're, you're, you know, preparing week in and week out and maybe you want to run the same thing, but stem to a front or come out of a coverage, whatever, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, and that kind of, you can see who kind of checks at that or who just, Oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. And so that's a feeling out process that you'll do throughout the certainly throughout fall camp, but even, even more so this time of year when, when it's different, different systems up front, a shift, a motion, something that comes up that you have to adjust to. Chris, our next one. With the tight ends, uh, Evan obviously missed the game and Johnny a little bit banged up, but how do you relegate the playing time between those three being they're all so experienced and maybe do you bring them in for situational, like if you need better blocking, you play X and Y compared to passing situations? Uh, that's a possibility. That's when you kind of can get into some, you know, predictability, which you, you never want, but the, the, the beauty and the, the beast about that position right now, like you said, is there's just been some guys in and out and, and I, you know, I think we're going to be in, in really good shape long-term, um, and, and excited about, you know, Johnny Munt had a fantastic game last week and, and had it had, again, like I said, the other night, his best fall camp. Um, and earned a lot of that and, and played like it, you know, played with confidence. And, and so hopefully, hopefully that will continue. And, and, you know, all the other principles in there will, will continue to grow and develop as well. Mark, we're so used to the Oregon offense always going fast. Has tempo been a um, more of a primary concern this week? I know it's always dictated on the team that you face and maybe the defense, but is that something that you're showing a bit more not concern, but uh, more direction to maybe this week. Um, I, I think yes and no. I mean, I think we we uh, ended up doing a few things differently, involving a little bit of motion last week, a little bit of uh, check and protection, which which you know slowed us down a little bit. Um, but yeah, we're 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 headed the right direction that way. I don't think you know we're not going to go crazy one way or the other this week, but uh, we'll see. Dakota said after the game the other night that um, he was dwelling on one particular pass, that incompletion to, to Darren, that uh, was just a little too much on it. Um, and he said that uh, he was thinking about that a lot and that he was owning up to the whole to the uh, lack of tempo at times in the game. What has he shown you um, and how has he responded, reacted to game one? Uh, he's responded fine. You know, I think that that's the biggest thing is just identifying the the issue and then being willing and able to, to own it and solve it. And that's for everybody, you know, coaches and players included. Um, and, you know, the quarterbacks always think about the, the long ones. I'm thinking about the two flat routes to Charles Nelson that are walk-in touchdowns. And those, those are the ones that he just needs to realize that that's, that's a huge play. When you throw a ball four yards and the guy breaks, you know, 16 tackles or whatever, you get credit for that. Right. So just take the easy one and uh, you know, continue to, to, to grow and develop. Uh, you know, this week is a is a is a test from a, a schematic standpoint in terms of there's guys coming from everywhere. They're standing up. They're in a stance. They're not. They're you know everywhere, and so it's it's a it's a test. And that's you know going back to the tempo thing. Uh, sometimes that's a, a an ally. Sometimes that's an an adversary. 
Yeah, Coach, with, you're playing freshman, a lot of redshirt freshmen too. How, how, are you satisfied with the depth that you've got on both sides of the ball after a month of practice in a game one? Um, satisfied is a weird word. You're never satisfied. I think, I think, I think where we're going is a, is a great place. And that, you know, we just gotta, we need to grow up fast. We need to, to learn from, learn from our mistakes and make one mistake and, and never do it again, uh, type of, of deal. Uh, but I, 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 you know, I do think we're, we have a lot of young guys that are very talented that, that have, you know, absolutely their best football ahead of them. Coach, you mentioned Bronco um, earlier. Um, what um, what is the character of his team? He is always he seems like a hard nosed, tough football coach. Do you think? Have you seen that his team kind of takes on that that characteristic? Is that kind of what Bronco Mendenhall is all about? Sure. Yeah, I, I would definitely say that. That you know, very very passionate. Obviously, a defensive defensive guy uh, and that but that carries over to how you play offense it carries over how do you how you play special teams um, and so that no absolutely that's a, a, a great characterization Mike? sort of touching back on the running backs do you think after what you've seen from week one and through fall camp is this the deepest group of running backs you've had at Oregon or that you've seen with this with this school uh, I wouldn't say that yet you know I think we need to, to produce a little bit more before we, we start talking too much um, there, I would say they probably have the capability, but I, we haven't seen, you know, when you put Kenyon Barner and the Michael James out there after, uh, you know, LeGarrette Blunt, that's, that's a pretty good threesome right there. And then the next year, the Michael and, and Kenyon and, um, uh, D'Anthony. So there, there's not yet.